So now we are going to move from Asia to Africa and uh, we are going to invite our sister Dengi Sile from Zimbabwe and sister Sheila from Mozambique to share on charity works and sustainability. So let's invite our two sisters from Africa. Gan -en. Hi. Um. Hello, everyone. Okay. Do you have Sister Sheila there? Can you turn on your video? Okay. So this is uh, now we have this very special session because today we are truly grateful to have two volunteers from two African nations to share with us their Suchi charity works and how they help and enable the locals to be self-sustaining. First, we have Sister Lengisile Gianni from Zimbabwe. She's a young and energetic volunteer and is currently the main administrative staff of Suchi in Zimbabwe. Sister Lengisile participated in various local meetings handle custom clearances, all admin matters and was responsible for coordinating Shruti and external affairs, reporting on Shruti's documentation materials and leading young volunteers in Zimbabwe. She joined Shruti in 2017 and became a commissioner in 2021. In November 2020, she became an online Chinese class student at uh, Shruti University so she's able to speak a little uh, in Chinese. And uh, so let us now welcome Sister Lengisile to share with us about charity and sustainability in Zimbabwe. Sister Lengisile, please. Oh, thank you very much, Brother Andrew, for the wonderful and humbling introduction. Dear Master, Dhamma Master Cheng Yen, dear Masters of the Abode, Suchi family, Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity as Zimbabwe, and we hope we'll be able to share better what our experiences in terms of charity and sustainability in Zimbabwe. Like they say, my name is Sister Sheng Silejiani from Zimbabwe. So on the agenda, we have Boho, uh, we have Boho sighting, uh, drilling and installation, and then the second item I'm going to be talking about is the government and non-government organization and corporate society partnerships that we've done in Zimbabwe. And lastly, we're going to be talking about how we managed to transform a community from eating termites and shepherd beetles to eating a bear, to promoting a vegetarian diet. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, Mainly what we've been doing is that we've been trying to provide clean and safe water in Zimbabwe. As we know, as Dhamma Master Cheng and has always uh, taught us that water is life. So in Zimbabwe, we're facing water challenges, water shortages. Next slide. Next slide, please. Okay, so Zimbabwe is a landlocked country and our neighboring countries being South Africa, our sisters from Mozambique there, Botswana and Zambia. And our water is supplied by two major rivers, that is the Zambezi River and the Limpopo River. So count these two major rivers and the small streams that we have. They are the only supply of water that we have in Zimbabwe and it's not sufficient enough for 14.86 million people. Next slide. So what we have seen, in our, as you can see from the pictures through our visits in different communities, is that mostly women and girls, they are walking 10 to 15 kilometers trying to fetch water. And this is mostly in rural areas. So some of the effects is that, as you know, Zimbabwe has been uh, on the receiving end of cholera outbreak. We have diarrhea, we have typhoid, which is very, very painful. And you can only imagine with the coming in of COVID-19, the effects. We also look at how children's education has been affected because these children, they are walking so uh, so many long distances trying to go and fetch water. We look at issues to do with health, looking at chest pains. You can imagine such a small young child 
carrying a 20 liter bucket for 10 to 15 kilometers. Imagine that same child after about 50 years. So we also look at them not even having enough water for the gardens to sustain themselves and not even having enough water to drink. And we have a lot of cases of people dying from snake bites as well. Next slide. So you can see from the pictures, what they are doing is that they are drinking water from dams, they are drinking water from rivers, they are drinking water from open wells. And you can see the bottom picture, it's a young child. Imagine being at, from such a young age, they are already drinking this water. It's not boiled because they imagine if you have walked 10 to 15 kilometers to the dam and you want you are thirsty, you cannot walk 10 to 15 kilometers back again to boil water. So they just drink that water like that and they carry the, their plates so that they can wash their dishes there. Next slide. So the challenges are not only limited to rural areas. We have in urban areas in Harare, for example, where people are fetching water from these pits. You can see the water is there, is barely there, but they have to fill maybe a 20 liter bucket so that they can, uh, the family can survive. Next slide. So some, in some cases, sometimes they get there, the water is not there. So what they do is they fetch very, very dirty water. You can see it's already from brown to darkish to black with the amount of dirt, but they have nothing that they can do. They're just trying to survive. Like what Master says, what, is life? So what do we do when there's no water? So they just fetch from there and they drink because they have nothing that they, there's nothing that they can do. Next slide. So in worst case scenarios, we have volunteers there. Sometimes we've been going to these communities to really try and feel what they're going through. And we had sometimes to wake up at around 12 at night or three at night and go and fetch water with them. So you can see the buckets, they don't have the normal life like anyone else out there. They're waking up early in the middle of the night to go and fetch water. They are young girls, they're young women. They're supposed to be resting for the day tomorrow, but there's nothing that they can do. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. So what we have done is that we have engaged the government department because what we have realized is that we cannot fix this problem alone. So what we did was, Suchi, we have the bowl pipes, we have the volunteers, we have maybe the technical expertise, but sometimes we have the DDF. They know the database, like what Brother Andrew was talking about, how, that we need to install these bowls to families in real, who are really, really in need. So the government department, they have this database where they know the families that are most affected. So we partnered together and we have been working together in trying to install bowls in different communities in such a way that Sushi, we have the pipes, we have the skills, and DDF, they also have some skills that they have. So whenever we meet, we're sharing uh, experience, sharing skills so that we can be able to help communities better next uh, next slide please so okay what we've done is that we can see that master says that when sentient beings are suffering how can we not go to them it is very important that sometimes we should not be limited by distance. Sometimes the suffering cannot come to us, so it is important for us to go there. So you find that the more remote a community is, the more adverse the water challenges. They have no roads, they have no mobile network connections. Even when a borehole breaks down, who do they call? Because they can't even reach anyone because of the no because of the network connections. But volunteers are willing to reach such communities to provide help. Next slide. So you can see from the pictures that we have faced challenges because I talked about the roads that are barely there, they are non-existent. So we have had several car breakdowns. Sometimes our volunteers sleeping two days in the bushes because the car broke down and there's no, maybe there's no accessible route for the volunteers to be reached. So sometimes we have the community coming in maybe with their livestock, with their cattle, pulling the cars so that they can, we, the volunteers can be able to reach their destinations. And all this has been in a bit to try and uh, provide clean water for communities. Next slide. So what we've done is in Tsuchi, we site for the water, we drill the boreholes, and then we install the pipes. So what we do is we've engaged several stakeholders. For example, we use different methods to try and find for the points that have more water holding capacity. So you can see those are the volunteers. And you can see most of these areas, they are very remote areas that volunteers have to go and work. 
next slide and after we have drilled the boards because we want to create a sense of ownership we encourage the community maybe to later come together in partnership with the ddf to build their own aprons so that they can create a sense of ownership and they can develop a sense of okay we have to care for this ball so that we can have water in the long run next slide So what we do whenever we, it, you can see at each and every process, we try and engage the community. Like I said, some of the areas have no roads. So what we want to do is during the installation, we invite the community to come and take part because we want to make sure that the DDF is there, the community is there and switch is there. So that one day if the ball wakes up and maybe has a malfunction, they can still fix that ball because what happens when maybe in an area that has no mobile network, the ball breaks down. We don't want them to lose that uh, that moment of having water just because of one glitch. So we always invite the community to come and take part so that they can also have a sense of ownership and they can also later help. So you can see afterwards, this is the water that they were fetching, maybe sucking from a pipe to the bowls that have been chewed by Tsuchi. Thank you. Next slide. So in 2022, in total, we have had 24 boreholes, that is the fixed and the new boreholes, and we have helped 12,000 families. And what we do is each borehole depth is 80 meters so that we can have maximum water capacity. So you can see we have 12,000 families that have water, and this water, they can use it for gardening, they can use it for vegetable farming, they can use it even to serve their families and children now can wake up and go to school early. Thank you. Next slide. So next we're going to be talking about fostering partnerships for development. If there's one thing that we have realized is that we cannot fix this world alone. Like the Mama Stachengen says that we cannot ex expect the government to do everything on its own. So what we have done is to you, we have uh, put in the government, we have put in different NGOs, we have put in the corporate society in trying to foster development in different areas that we, uh, that we work. Next slide. So what we do is through our works, because of the work that we have done in Zimbabwe, we find that we have had a lot of engagements with the government trying to, to, to invite us and also working with us, trying to see better ways that we can help Zimbabwe. And it is because of this that uh, we have said to ourselves that when whatever meeting that we have, whatever opportunity that we have, we go with Tsuchi publications so that we can share with them so that they can know Tsuchi's mission, that we are not just here to give maybe a bag of rice. We are here to deliver the great love message. We are here to foster sustainable development. We are here to foster community development. Thank you. Next slide. So because of this, like I said, due to the long-term partnership, because they now know what is Tsuchi's mandate, what is Tsuchi's mission, Tsuchi was the only organization that has allowed it a mine explosion that occurred in Mazowe. So in the picture, you can see those are the Tsuchi volunteers sitting with the bereaving families. Next slide. Next slide. So you can see the mine of the because of the mine we had a total of six and we had a total of eight victims. We had six uh, Chinese nationals who were affected and two uh, Zimbabwe nationals who were affected. And the two men, unfortunately, they were blown to several pieces. And it's very sad because uh, the government said, "We know Tsuchi, you always have words of comfort. Your volunteers, they are all they always have this soft voice. You are the right people to be there for this family." At a time like this, you can imagine trying to pick your husband in several pieces. So the volunteers went there and we offered aid in terms of COVID-19, PPE materials, blankets, as well as food. So next I'm going to talk about how, because of our work in terms of distributing masks, uh, distributing protective clothing to different hospitals, we were invited to join the COVID-19 National Mask Up campaign, which was in six uh, cities. Next slide. Next slide. 
Oh, yes. So through this, we ended up, remember I talked about corporate partnerships, we would have thought that Tsuchi and Pepsi would be partnering, but because we have a common goal and like everyone else, COVID-19 has brought in a lot of uncertainty. So Tsuchi was working with Pepsi, we were working with Red Cross, doing road shows, uh, spreading the message on how best we can protect ourselves up against COVID-19, as well as trying to come up with ways that we can make communities safer um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Next slide. Next slide. Yes. So because of these partnerships, you found that sometimes when you go, for example, we went to Zaka Mashingo during Cyclone in 2019. We had this development partner, uh, partner Mr. Manfred Mad. His community was affected by Cyclone Idai, and we have the volunteers visiting, trying to come up with solutions, trying to come up with ways that we can deliver aid. Next slide. So what he did now is that later he says he came to our office and said, Brother Chu, I want Tsuchi to have a home in Zaka. What you did, I don't want it to be a one-day event. I, we hope we can have food servers in our community. And then Brother Chu said to him specifically, I want you to take these books. We want you to read. We want you to understand what is Tsuchi's mission so that when we, you start uh, maybe looking for volunteers, when you start the work, because it's about 400 kilometers, we want you to, be, to make sure that you have the right mission, you have our master's mission in your mind. Next slide. So the same way that we had uh, Tsuchi starting with the home visits, this is how it started in Saka. We have the volunteers initially being five and they started with these home visits and they are cleaning. And you can see these are the first recipients in Zaka. And from there now, I'm grateful that we have so many volunteers in Zaka who have joined because of this one seed that was planted during Cyclone Idai. Next slide. So are we going to be lastly talking about how from eating termites and beetles, we managed to form farming support groups that are benefiting over 1,000 families every year. So from the picture, you can see this is the community and uh, you can see what they were doing is they were harvesting termites and they were harvesting shelter beetles to eat. So what you can see is when we went there for the distribution, we were saddened, of course, by the fact that because we are all human, if you see a grown man trying to harvest such small insects it means he's trying to survive he has nothing to eat at the end of the day and they fry them and they eat but even the if we look at it nutritionally it's not enough even if they were to sell it's not enough next slide so one of the biggest challenges that we had was then how then do we uh, talk to this community about vegetarian lifestyles. At the same time, we want to come up with a method that will provide maybe food for them. Because even if we tell them don't eat termites, they're going to tell you, we have nothing to eat, so what will we eat? So it was very important to come together with the government, with the community, and try and come up with ideas on how we can help each other. Next slide. Uh, Sister Lengisile, I'm so sorry to stop you here. Because okay. of time constraint, you know, we need to keep some time for our next sister. So uh, we hope you can come back again and share more stories with us because your stories are very, very touching, very inspiring. And you, uh, our volunteer in Zimbabwe is doing a great, great job, Thank especially you. the water. You know, Master Cheng Yen says that giving is like drawing water from a well. And as the water is drawn, more will flow in the well. So in this same way, it is like by giving the blessings, you know, it will continue to flow in. So all the wells that, that our Susi volunteers in Zimbabwe has built and bore the holes, I'm sure it's providing a lot, a lot of uh, blessings to the local people and a lot of uh, life. Okay, so we thank you so much. Thank you, thank Sister you. Ling Disile, for your wonderful sharing. And I hope to listen to you again. And next we have Sister uh, Luisa Sheila Chambala from Mozambique. Oh. Sister Sheila used to serve in another NGO. And she got to know Suchi from Facebook. Oh, how convenient, right? In 2014, she became a Suchi volunteer at the end of 2017, and she was deeply moved. In 2018, she was willing to take a pay cut to become a Suchi staff. Sister Sheila is very diligent and willing to learn from Sister Denise and Brother Dino. Her responsibilities include organizing volunteer activities and charity events. She is indeed a valuable contributor to the works of Sushi in Mozambique. 
benefiting many, many people and inspiring many more. So let's now welcome Sister Sheila to share with us on the Mozambique Great Love. Over to you, Sister Sheila. Sister Sheila, can you unmute your microphone? We cannot hear you. Uh, thank you, Master Chen Yen, for the opportunity. Thank you, all the masters in their boards, and also thank you, all bodhisattvas in the world. My name is Sheila, and volunteers in Mozambique. I want to share the activity when, when Mozambique did start in 2008. Next. Uh, Mozambique is Africa Austral, is a part of Sub-Saharan Africa. And Mozambique is a near of another countries. Uh, when we have a representative of sushi in Malawi, Zimbabwe, and also ESA. Next. Uh, in Mozambique now, we are representative in the capital of Mozambique, Maputo, and also in Sofala province. Next. Next, sorry, uh, the sushi uh, in, Mo in Mozambique, concrete in Maputo, uh, started in 2008 when uh, Mama Denise and Manu Dinu bring the spirit of sushi to, to Mozambique and they bring all the, the teaching from Master Chen Yen to, to Mozambique, concrete in, in Maputo. When we started the foundation in Mozambique, uh, we see a different situation of the people when don't have a condition to 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 eat something in the in the in the one day. Next, uh, the volunteers start the farm uh, to to encourage the the volunteers to help to, to assist others and also uh, to take the lo, lo, great farm to have a platform not only to give the not only to assist the beneficial with food but also to use uh, this platform to she to inspire and also teaching the, the beneficial and another volunteers in the neighborhood how can be a, 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 I can open the, your 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 heart and also how can have the com compassion with others. Next, when the cyclone uh, Idai uh, passed in Mozambique, they made a corrupt in the life of the people. Because the people before to the cyclone he died, they they uh, they suffer. But when the cyclone he died pass, the the problem increase in the life of the people in the so far. Thanks. And uh, we make a different activity. The past the cyclone he died because the people suffer a lot. And uh, we see that uh, it's not the only food that can help the people, but also we need to, we need to take the spirit of love when we must change us to uh, Sorry, Sister Sheila, can you unmute your mic? Can you unmute your, your mic? Uh, sister, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm sorry, sorry. Okay, please continue. Uh, yeah, inspired by the. 
Sorry, do you mind? Uh, I'm muting your mic again, Sister Sheila. Yeah, thank you so much. Inspired by the Master Chenian teaching, uh, the volunteers from Maputo take all the love when Master Chenian sharing with, the, with them and take for Sofala to inspire the volunteers not only to give the material but also to 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 teaching the people that the material when to she give and when another organization give it's not all in the life we need to open our we need to open our minds to see a different situation but first we need to to love and we need to have a compassion with others next uh, mama denise uh, give us this teaching to encourage the volunteers to be to be uh, or to be uh, strong when encourage the cyclone Idai and uh, teach us how we can improve our life and how we can we can take a good way to to don't have a car to make a good a good a, to have a good heart. Next. Next, this is a, a some picture when the, the, the disaster passed, the cyclone Idai passed in Sofala. This is some image that destroyed when the cyclone Idai. Next, this is some number when we, we after uh, the cyclone Idai, uh, the Tushi. Uh, assist the people now when building the house and also building the school, 23 school in the Nyamatanda district. Next. And the four encourage the volunteer, the beneficiary, because don't see that uh, 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 the finish in the life is the, 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 the things when to she give. We, 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 we see that another, Another another way to development the minds of the community is to building the house in the sofa. Mama Denise inspired uh, us in the sofa and all the volunteers with the Master Chenian teaching and encourage the local village and the local community to to wake up, not only to see the material, but also to see how we can, we can improve our life, but don't think all with material, but also we can see the, our situation, but also we need to think about others. Next, in this, in this case, in Sofala, uh, we have a six farm in different area, in Metushira, in Yamatanda and in Lamego. The first volunteers, the first volunteers, Paul, starts to, to make the first farm to help the people and also to help to help the people, but not on the, the farm. It's not on to see the vegetable to eat, but it's a platform when all the volunteers converge in the same area to listen the teaching of Master Chen Yen. Next. We see the picture here is a different volunteers when work the, with the harmonia in the farm. Someone take a, 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 the material to, to, to work in, in the farm. Next, we see a, a harmonia also in the volunteers because all the day when, when volunteers go to the farm, uh, they are learning the, the aphorism, they are, are, are sharing the teaching and also the volunteers make a gratitude for all the, the, the production when we have because Master Chenian 
teach us that we need to say we need to be gratitude for all the things in our life and the, all the things when we do in our farm also we say thank you for vegetable because they help us a lot not only to eat but also to to arrive in the community to sharing the love with them we see here it's another is a picture that uh, the volunteers take the the food to assist the, the beneficiary with more respect, with more uh, 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 attitude, and with more gratitude. Next. Okay. We see here, uh, but uh, our, uh, our activity in Mozambique inspired different people. We see in the picture is a whole man when you see our activity, he say that I know that Tushi not only helped me, but uh, uh, I want to Sushi use the farm not only to 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 give for the beneficial, but also to see others and inspire more spirit of Tushi to beneficial to change the mind. The mind how can we see the life, Master Chen Yen give us the opportunity to learn your teaching and i give in the farm we also we don't go and we start to, to work but we have a space when the commissioner and the volunteers sharing the love sharing the the the, the master chenian teaching to inspire the volunteers to to make a to work with the good heart to inspire more people not uh, 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 to think only to the food when we they come but also we need to reflect about our life and also uh, in the in the in the in the Shira area, before to go to the farm, we also share in the teaching in the river because in the sutra we learn that the 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 the, the, the water, the dharma is like water, and we when we are in the in the river we talk with the river because this this water purify our our hearts. <laughs> We see here is a different volunteers when working to she Mozambique, including our drive when it helped a lot us. Thanks. This is a different types of the organization of the information in the in the our system. We make our picture because we know that we talk a different language and we put in one line the, the photo of the, the vegetable when we are when we are talk. Next. This is a, a master genius. Uh, touch the story of bamboo uh, touch Mozambique and uh, we, 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 we we make a different bamboo in Mozambique like potato like potatoes we see in the in the different picture the volunteers may start to make a bamboo of potatoes to help others next 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 uh, in the april of these years the volunteers receive the seeds to put in the our farm but the volunteers say that uh, this seed this uh, seeds maybe it's not enough to help others and in metoshira the volunteers have the initiative to to collect bamboo to increase the seeds for your farm, we, we need to say that in Mozambique, uh, to ten ten dollar, uh, twenty one hundred of dollar, it's a lot. Uh, in one person can live maybe three months, but volunteers collect the bamboo to to help others and increase the seeds to help another people. This is a some demonstration of invoice and also when the volunteers in, in. This is an explanation that uh, in Mozambique we have a, a 28 million of people. It, or it, or, 
aging of the people cannot depend of life. And of course, the children under the, the, the six years don't go into school. Next. This is a information that we uh, organize the, 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 the bamboo. And it's also with the money when volunteers collect, we buy these seeds. And these seeds now the volunteers already put in the farm. This is a, a seat when uh, our technical give for volunteers to put in the farm. And I want to say also thank you for Master Chen Yen uh, again, because uh, Master Chen Yen, Master Chen Yen give us the opportunity to change our life and also uh, the rich, uh, uh, the material, the material, it's not enough. Uh, we need to have a spirit rich, and uh, we con will continue to, to follow master. We are always, we are, uh, we think that maybe we, we know master later because we every day we run to learn the teaching of Master Chen Yen to maybe we can fix the time when maybe we need to know Master Chen Yen before. And I want to guarantee Master Chen Yen that we will continue to follow your teaching. We will continue to, to share it with others your love and also we will share in the love with others. Thank you so much for the opportunity to Thank you. Talk thank you, Sister Sheila. In the world. Yes, thank you very much, Sister Sheila. We all of us can feel your love and we are very touched and very inspired by your sharing and by your sincerity to follow Master's teaching. You are truly a good master a student, disciple, and we are all very inspired. And the great farm, great love farm of Mozambique is full with love. We can see that. And it's not just cultivating the land, you know, to grow vegetables, but you are also cultivating the heart, the fields of blessings inside every one of you and the local community. You have uh, cultivating it with great love. And I'm sure this field of blessings, it will grow into beautiful, beautiful harvest. Okay, we give you a beautiful life and uh, with great love and inspiring even more people to join uh, Suchi. So again, thank you very much, Sister Sheila and all our Mozambique volunteers for your dedication and your uh, inspir inspiring stories. Okay, so we look forward to hear more stories from you again in the near future. Thank you. So now we will uh, go back to our main program. So we'll hand over back to our MC, Sister Xin Qing. Thank okay. you. Can and Brother Andrew and our sisters, a uh, very wonderful sharing from Africa. And I, I'm sure we'd love to hear more from all of you uh, very soon.